Hello everyone, and welcome to the final meditation in our Loving the World series. As always, this meditation is based on the content from Wednesday's podcast, and so you'll probably want to listen or watch or read that before you use this video. It will definitely make this practice more meaningful for you. This week we focus on the sacredness of our earth and how connecting with that sacredness not only deepens our love for the world, but also enriches our lives. And a bit later on in the practice, we'll be using a finger labyrinth again, so make sure that you have yours ready for that. Let's still ourselves. You can deepen your breathing, ground yourself in your body and in the place where you are, and prepare your heart, mind and body for the meditation ahead. If you were able to do something to simplify your life a little last week, and if you found an object or symbol to add to your altar, then now's the time to mindfully place this new element in your altar. Over the years, I've always wanted to care for my health, and obviously I do exercise to do that. I do some gym work, and I really found that going to a gym cluttered my life too much. There was too much noise, too much stimulation. It was difficult for me, and so I've learned to simplify my life by working out at home and using the equipment that I have, my body. And so I do a, a lot of body weight work and, and these are my gym gloves. So they represent the simplicity of my workouts uh, that I have now. And once you've placed whatever your element is in your altar, take a few moments to reflect on your altar and the journey of the last few weeks that it now represents. And now be aware of your groundedness once again. Feel your feet on the earth and imagine your roots drawing nourishment and strength from the earth. Feel the goodness rising up through your body and raise your arms to let the life and goodness flow up through your fingertips and out into the world. And once again, rest in this flow of energy and allow it to fill and strengthen you once again. Now reflect for a moment on your spiritual journey. Consider any ways that your faith may have disconnected you from the earth or taught you to view the world as less than sacred. And then consider any ways that your faith encouraged you to value and love the earth more. Notice any points of connection between the seasons, cycles and patterns of the natural world and your spiritual practice. And notice any points where your spirituality and the world are out of sync. And also observe any thoughts or feelings that arise in yourself in response to this reflection. And now spend a few moments honoring and celebrating your faith for how it has connected you with the world. And then consider what changes you can make to restore connection in any aspects of your faith that may have broken your connection with the earth. I'll give you some time and silence to do that work. Now reflect on any experience or relationship you may have had with earth-based spirituality. Bring to mind any opinions or feelings that you associate with earth-based spiritual practices, noting whether your overall sense is negative, positive or neutral. If you have a strong religious affiliation, take note of whether you feel any conflict between your religion and earth-based spirituality. Also consider any elements of earth-based faith that may already be present in your religious tradition. Take some time to consider how you can integrate earth-based practices into your religious practice. Identify any specific practices 
that you feel can enrich your faith and life. And make a note to be intentional about incorporating them into your spiritual practice in the future. And finally, take a moment to think specifically about your relationship with the earth. Bring to mind any words or phrases that best describe that relationship. Be especially aware of any thoughts or language that reflect a sense of hierarchy or uneven power dynamics between you and the earth. Consider whether any of your descriptors would diminish you in favor of the earth or if any of them would diminish the earth in your favor. And now consider what it means for you to have an I-Thou relationship with the world, one where you are peers and partners, co-creators and lovers. Have you thought of your relationship with the earth in this way before? Is it a familiar approach for you to approach the earth on equal terms like this? Or is this a new, perhaps even challenging way to see things? Take some time to explore what you would like to do to nurture a more intimate and loving relationship with your world. And now give yourself some time to respond to what has emerged in this meditation. And you may want to return again to the labyrinth ritual. Use your non-dominant hand with your finger labyrinth and trace the path inward. As you do, let go of any ideas you may have of the earth as less than sacred, as dead, or is simply something that exists to serve humanity. When you get to the center, pause for as long as you want and open yourself to a renewed sense of the earth as a living being with whom you are in an intimate and loving relationship. Be aware once again that you are in a thin place and feel your connection with the earth and feel the life that pulses in and through the earth. And finally, as you trace the path outward again, make a new commitment to love the earth in some repeatable, practical way that you can make part of your life from this point on. Now as you prepare to return to your daily routine, commit to creating a ritual in, in the next few days. Make it one that you can do every day and that connects you more deeply to the earth and whatever season you're experiencing in your world at the moment. When we view the earth as simply a non-living object, a storehouse of resources for our consumption, it is very hard to truly love it. And it impoverishes us because we lose touch with the life, the nourishment, and the love 
that can flow into us from the world. But when we recognize and begin to experience the earth as a living being to whom we are connected and with whom we share an intimate, interdependent and loving relationship, our lives are transformed. And we're able to open ourselves to the energy, the life and the love that flows throughout the cosmos. I hope that in some small way this meditation and those of the last few weeks has helped you to experience some of this reality. Thank you for being part of this meditation. If it has helped you in any way, feel free to pass it on to others so that they can enjoy it too. Next time we begin a new journey that will take us through the next few months, in which we will explore various aspects of loving God, however you may understand or experience God, even if you don't believe in a God as such. I hope you'll come along for that journey too.